Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. This is Manifest Tarot. I'm so happy you're here. Uh, today, we are doing an open reading. Um, I just felt like there was a strong need for an open reading where we're just going to see what comes up and see what messages we need to here with no presupposition. So to do that, I just turned the deck over and picked three cards and these these came up. Um, so for pile number one, this is card number 34, a leg up. What a cute card. And with that one, I chose this clear quartz heart which is so funny, it, it, you know, obviously it looks like um, ice, like specifically it looks like spring ice when it's cracking and melting. So pretty. And then for pile number two, oh, did I mention this is card number 34, a leg up uh, for pile number one. Pile number two, this is card number 35, Loyal Heart. Such a charming card. They each have they have matching crowns. Oh no, they're not matching. They're they're almost ma they're matching in size, but they're different. They're beautiful. And then for the crystal, I picked this tiger eye heart because it reminded me of the wings of these the feathers actually of these owls. And for pile number three, I picked this soulmates card. This is number 41, or actually it just, it came up. It was, these were the, the three cards that were at the bottom of the deck. And this is also a charming card. We have, we have three pairings of uh, animals on all these cards. So for pile number three, um, there's this rose quartz heart. So these are the three piles and very interesting, very charming and very um, filled with, they're already filled with meaning. They're already filled with the possibility and um, like anticipation. So pick whichever pile you would like and I will of course leave the timestamps below and I'll see you in your reading. Pile number one, welcome to your reading. You chose this charming card, a leg up. I mean, how much cuter could you be than this card, may I ask? Card number 34, a leg up with these two polar bears, a mom and a cub. And with this card, I think I'm gonna put it here. With this card, there's this clear quartz a heart that is very reminiscent of spring ice when it's melting. All right. I have two more um, oracle decks. I'm going to pick one card from this deck. Let's wake it up. Oops, I'm sorry. I jiggled the camera. Let's wake it up. There's our card right here. And then I have these tea leaves. I'm gonna pick one or two cards from each of these piles. And I split them into two piles because they're just so squirrely that they just like to um, slide around a lot. And so, actually this one. So it's, they're so much easier to handle Whoops. There's this one. They're so much easier to handle as two two piles. There's this one. All right, let's see what we have here. Actually, oh no, I'm gonna do <laughs> Alright, so protective nest. How interesting. This looks 
very similar in like in theme to this a leg up it's the mom protecting and caring for the little cub and this is the mom <laughs> protecting the mom protecting the cub the the cub this mom is protecting her um egg and this mom is protecting her eggs and 25 protective nest all right can you see this hmm i really want you to be able to see everything there looks like you can see it all all right let's see what we have for the tea leaves the first one is lobster financial pinch keeping with the sea creature um, theme here. Flag, do not be tempted to lower your standards. Grapes, time to go out and have fun. Fly, a period of ill health and depression. Hmm. Well, let's see what we have. We have these two, we have these two, and we have these two. They're, they're different um, here. I'm sorry, I'm trying to maximize our space here. There we go. We have two different feelings of cards. We have this financial pinch and a period of ill health or depression. And then we have don't be tempted to lower your standards and time to go out and have fun. So it's, you know, I have some thoughts about all of this, but I'm going to wait and see all of the tarot cards first. So these, this card, these cards are, um, this is the front and this is the back so this is like um this card has just two sides of the same two views of the same scene so that's why the back has artwork so i'm i'm going to shuffle it like this so that i'm not distracted by the uh oh my gosh this card came out again that's nuts uh so i'm not distracted by these so i can Pull them with more, um, how should I say? Pull them with more like, uh, I just realized the camera stopped recording. So I had just gone a little bit further. Uh, I, I'm not sure exactly what I was saying. I think I was saying that I was, I, I don't know. Anyway, let's just go on. I hadn't even started uh, pulling these, so that's good. So I can keep these on. I can keep the pulling on camera for these. That would have been sad if I hadn't uh, been able to pull these on camera. So we have. Hmm. I think this one. Oh, one more. Look at all these that wanted to come out. Wow, we have a lot. All right, so you've already kind of seen, oops, did I? I think these are, um, yeah, so this is the back. I had them upside down, but you've already seen these because there's no way to, to you've already seen all of the other cards because there's no way to pull them out and put them on here without you seeing them. So anyway, they've already been revealed, but. <laughs> This is the High Priestess, and she has, look at all of her learning and her scrolls, her little uh, potions. She has a um, sphinx. I'm wondering if there's another sphinx underneath her, her cloak very interesting she she is um embodying like 
you're learning into practice. Do you know what I mean? This is what I'm getting from this card. Taking your learning, taking your book learning, for instance, and putting it into practice. And let's see. The back has, I wonder if, you know, like the, what do you call it? The, um, what is it in Rome? You know, the big, the big temple that they, that uh, has the open hole in the top. I wonder if it's something like that. Wait, I'm going to look it up because I have to look it up. Yes, it was, the, it's the Pantheon. So, um, for those of you who don't know, the Pantheon, you know, the Pantheon has that big hole in the top. And um, when it's raining, the rain just comes right into the Pantheon. So with this, the, the fact that it's dark here and then there's this really bright circle, I'm wondering if uh, there's a hole up there and then when it rains, it might, it might just fall in. I don't know why, oh, I don't know why I'm thinking about that so much but here we go this is our first one the high priestess and then the second card is the death card and i have gotten this card in one of the readings last week actually you know since i already saw the cards as they were coming out because there's no way to, to hide them um there's two card there's there's three cards in this reading that have come up re very recently. And there's one card that's come up, I think, five times recently. It's pretty crazy. This is the front of the death card. Pretty traditional, you know, pretty, pretty much what you would expect. There's this very frightening, you know, imposing figure on this horse. The horse has flames for eyes. It's it's flying this dark standard with this um, tattered edge. And they're on their knees in supplication. But then what is here on the back? There's this renewal. There's happiness. They're, they're both holding flowers, and this woman is actually dancing in the background. She's like so happy she's dancing in the background. Oops, that's the back. This is the front. Now this one is the Ace of Cups, a new beginning, which is echoing. That's the front, and this is the back. So this is echoing this death card, which is really saying there's a new beginning right on the other side of this death card. There's something ending and there's a new beginning. And look at this beautiful new beginning. Look at all these lotus flowers. Actually, yeah, this figure right here has a lotus flower. And then we come to this one where all these lotus flowers are growing. So these two cards are connected. So this is the front again, and then this is the back. So we have a, a view of the nighttime where this, this person is coming, riding over to, maybe it's, maybe it's been a hot, okay, I'm going to make up a story. Maybe it's been a hot day, and he's been cooped up in the castle all day, like, uh, trying to stay cool, hiding from the sun. He's all... He was all tired and, and just kind of laying around all all hot and not able to really find the motivation to do anything. But then when night came, it's all nice and cool. So he put on his little doublet and his, I don't know, his little leggings. I don't know what he has on there. His boots. And he goes for a ride. And so he's happy that it's nighttime and it's cooler and he is enjoying the fountain and enjoying the beautiful lotus flowers because it does look hot here let's see taking advantage of what you're given right there i have so much to say about these but let's reveal the rest so again we already saw this this is the tower this is the front of the tower 
in the back of the tower card. So I've we've already seen, and this came these two cards came up in a reading last week. So interesting because they come up together again. And then this card, this two of pentacles, has come up so many times, it's almost unreal. So this two of pentacles, here's the front, and here's the back. So these are the cards that came out for this deck. And then now look, now we're gonna get the real surprise. <laughs> so we have the star card. And we have the three of pentacles. So we have the two of pentacles and now the three of pentacles. We have the hermit who is no longer a hermit because he has all these animal friends. Oh, <gasps> no way. Whoa, we have the tower card right underneath the tower card. Oh my God, pile number one. What is going on in your life? This is awesome. And we have the six of pentacles right underneath the two of pentacles. Okay, pile number one. I have so much to say. This is such an awesome reading, an awe-inspiring reading here. So first of all, first of all, there's been some heavy burden of yours. There's been a heavy burden and it does, it makes, there's no mistake that I put these first because look at this uh, on the top. There's a period of ill health and depression and financial pinch. And I was wondering when, when these came up, I'm wondering, is this, is this something that's coming up for you? Or is this something that is, you know, ending for you? What is this? And I, it's much more clear now that I see all of these. So, I mean, first of all, we, I just have to say with the two towers, it's so clear that some major, 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 I'm sorry I'm repeating myself, but major, change in your life. It's not a change in your life. It is like an upheaval of your life. It's very foundation. It's like below the foundation. And now it makes sense that I was talking about this Pantheon uh, building because it is a foundational change. And the Pantheon is the oldest unsupported dome and the largest, I think it's still the largest, it's the largest unsupported dome in the world and it's not the, it's not the oldest unsupported dome, I'm not sure about that, but I'm sorry. It is the largest unsupported dome in the world still to this day and it is in such beautiful good condition. So you know the foundations of that building are meticulous. Every single thing that went into building that building was meticulous for it to be still standing and in such good shape even now. Right? And so I'm wondering, the only thing that's not clear to me yet, which will probably be, be more clear as I read more, is, is if this foundation that we're talking about here, which is one of the two meanings of this uh, High Priestess card, are the foundations the ones you will be building? Or are they the foundations that are going to be torn, uh, you know, like uh, up, upheaved? <laughs> um, I know that's not a word, but oh well. So let's start with all of this other stuff. So I'm going to come back to this. So I've, I've got this up a little bit. So I'm going to come back to it, obviously, because 
maybe this is both. Maybe this is both because I, th I really think that one of the messages for this high priestess is the foundations of what you're going to build after this upheaval are so much stronger than anything you've ever had before that they're going to be able to stand for the rest of your life. That's what I see. So, yes, we have this death card, and we have this tower card, and we have this tower card. We just cannot... We just cannot go forward without these three being examined. So this tower card is pretty much um, the standard tower card. This is just, this is the after tarot. So it's a couple seconds after, excuse me, I had to cough. This is a couple seconds after the uh, original, not original, but the well-known Rider Waite Smith car, uh, deck. And you see now the lightning has totally torn the tower into two and the two figures have fallen to the ground. So they were in mid fall. The figures were in mid fall in the uh, Rider Waite Smith deck. And I think the the t the tower was just being hit um, by the lightning, but now it's totally in two. So the message there is it's it's so advanced. It's like there's no turning back. This this upheaval for you is underway right now, and it's pretty far gone. You know, it's pretty it's pretty far into the process. But what is so interesting about this tower card is that, again, this is pretty um, standard on this side. There's the tower, there's the figures falling, there's this Eye of Sauron. <laughs> um, but then on the back, we see that the tower was empty the whole time. And that there was all this debris on the in the tower, and that there was causing sadness, and no one wanted to be in the tower anyway. So from the front, the tower looks like it's hab inhabited or inhabitable, at least. It looks like the tower is um, something worthy of being saved. It looks like it's a shame that the tower is going to get destroyed. But as we look closer, we see that the tower was already mostly destroyed. It was only the facade that was standing. It's hollow. There's no one living in it. No one can live, live in it. No one wants to live in it. And it's actually causing some sadness. So all of those messages for the tower mean that it's a good thing that this is falling down. And this death card, again, it's the same type of message. There's the standard death card. It's these, this horse is so frightening. You know, it's like so intimidating and so frightening. And of course, the death figure itself is so intimidating. It's in full armor. It only has this little slit to see out of. No one can see who is in there. These two figures are supplicating and they know that they can't do anything. They fear that they are going to be destroyed by this death figure, right? But then we see they were not destroyed by the death figure. They're so happy now. All three of these figures, I don't know where she was. Maybe she was back here. Maybe she was back here cowering behind this tower you see there's two towers now and i got more to say about that too but first of all they're all so much happier and this is like the morning it's the sun is coming up it's going to be hot in the in the middle of the day but they're enjoying themselves right now in the cool of the morning relative cool they are so happy 
because of this experience. They know that this is, they are truly happy now because they are able to enjoy life more. Because they know what they feared did not come to pass. And so you see, the last thing I'm going to say about this card, for now at least, is that there are two towers now. The two towers that we have that are being destroyed, that we saw, are now replaced by these two towers. There's two whole, beautiful, complete towers now that are habitable and inhabited and bringing you, pile number one, joy. So what else do we have? We have, we have so much. We have this, I mean, I guess I'm going to have to go with this Ace of Cups next, this new beginning. This new beginning. So I also want, oh, I also want to say with this lobster and this fly, it feels like that is what is getting destroyed. I really, as I'm, as I'm getting into this reading, that is what is being destroyed. And I was thinking, wow, why we have this financial pinch and a period of ill health, depression, whatever. And then we have, they're so diametrically opposed to this, like time to go out and have fun and don't be tempted to lower your standards. The reason that you have this, don't be tempted to lower your standards is because you don't have to now. You don't have to now. So I would encourage you, pile number one, with this new beginning, to craft your life that's replacing the one that was destroyed by this tower moment. Craft it the way you want it to be because there's no limits. That's what this card is telling us. There's no limits with this. There's no limits as to what you can um, experience, to what you can, it's not even strive for. It's, 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 it's not a striving anymore for you. It is a having. You can have whatever you want, you can craft your new world exactly how you want it, pile number one. So we do have, this card has come up so many times. So we have this two of pentacles and this three of pentacles. And the two of pentacles, well, I'm gonna start with, the, I, was, I meant the three of pentacles, but I'm gonna start with the two of pentacles. So. He's balancing is pretty um, standard on the front. He's balancing uh, his two pentacles. He's balancing on one foot. And then in the back, we see his audience. And as I've said before, with this card, there's this once in a lifetime sunset. <laughs> Look at this sunset. It is gorgeous. I'm sure the entire sky is this flame orange, uh, yellow color and yet no one is looking at the sunset they're all looking at this figure as he's uh, juggling his two pentacles so that is the you that is emerging from the dust of construction here pile number pile number one there's these there's this magnetism that you have. You're drawing whoever you want into your life and whatever you want is in, and, and from the, the message, actually there's three pentacles here from this message of these pentacles. You're go, you're draw, you're drawing a lot of abundance into yourself, to your life, because we have this two of pentacles. You're drawing people in, you're drawing experiences in, and you're drawing wealth in. And then we have this three of pentacles. You are seeing what your work has done because he is leaving for the day. 
all of his, he's been working with others, you know, look at how intricate this carving is. This is a lot of work. This, this, this carving here is just amazingly intricate and one, one, wrong, one little wrong tap could ruin this whole thing. But these people that have been working on it are just so good at it that they're always perfect at it. So all of these tools are laid out here because they're going to come back tomorrow. And he has, has stayed behind after everyone else left to just take a moment to appreciate all of the labor and all of the beautiful things that have um, been revealed by all of their skilled and loving labor. So that's you being appreciative of your own skill. It sounds funny because we we tend to feel like, oh, if I'm a, if I appreciate my own skill, if I appreciate my own expertise, then I'm being bad, then I'm being, you know, uh, conceited. No, if you, everybody has at least one thing that they're so good at. And I want you, pile number one, to be completely cognizant of and proud of the things that you do well. You deserve it and you, you're your life is so, how, what am I trying to say? Your life is filled with you achieving wonderful things. And this card is reminding you, and I'm reminding you right now, to appreciate yourself and what you have brought to your life and what you continue to bring to your life and what you will continue to bring to your life because you are filled with wonderment. You're filled with beauty. You're filled with everything that people are drawn to. And again, people, wealth, experiences, they are going to be drawn to you and they're going to ignore other things to just put their attention on you. I love this card. And then the six of pentacles is pretty standard six of pentacles. He's got so much wealth that he's sharing it with others, sharing it with others in need. They look like maybe refugees or something. He is standing there with his um, scale. <laughs> I don't know what he's doing with that, but he is he's so abundant that he is able to share it with others with no feelings of financial pinch the way maybe he used to. And so that's your message that this, that these things that you didn't like in your experience are now over with. The bad thing that you thought was going to happen ended up either, I don't know, for some of you, it either might not happen. The death figure might ride away <laughs> and not do anything or whatever the death figure did is so, turns out so wonderfully for you. Maybe, maybe the death figure just was here to plow up the, uh, the field for, uh, uh, so you could plant cabbages. I don't know. So basically the death figure brought something that brought you, pile number one, a lot of joy. If that, that's really kind of funny. The death figure does not usually s seem like that, but this card tells that story. And yes, the tower moment is something that's positive for you. So your leg up is a literal leg up from 
these happenings that at first you're perceiving as negative. And so this is your reminder that the only reason that something can solidify into negative is if you say it, if you claim it as negative, if you say, okay, this is how my life is. Say pile number one that you had something bad happen to you. Something bad. Some huge monstrous death figure comes to you and you fall on your knees and you say, oh, no, please don't. Uh, and you feel like that's it. That this is it. You like, like, let's say it's a job like your professional life is over. You have nothing. You know, you're, you're going to end up with nothing. Everything's terrible. But then if you continue to say, no, that is not what I want. If you're a conscious manifester, you know what I mean. You do not let that solidify into your truth. And so these these two, these three figures did not let that solidify into their truth. And therefore their next morning is filled with warmth and flowers and dancing and this raven on a skull. <laughs> Adding some levity to the situation. So this, this high priestess, I think that what, I mean, I already talked about the foundations, but I think there's another message for this high priestess. Are you a conscious manifester? If you are a conscious manifester, if you are interested in this law of assumption teaching, you will have heard or read or however you're getting your information um, that um, all things are possible, right? All things are possible and any of the other teachings that resonate with you, anything, maybe pick one teaching. I will, I'll stick with all things are possible. Neville used to say that. Neville Goddard used to say that a lot. It's different to, this is the main message of this uh, High Priestess card. It's different to read than it is to do. Neville used to say be a doer of the word and not a hearer only. Be a doer and not a hearer only. He used to give lectures. He used to give lecture after lecture after lecture. And, you know, he doesn't want, or he didn't want his audience to go in and hear him and see him every week and then go home and not put their knowledge into practice. And is this a warning? Is she someone who does or doesn't put her knowledge into practice? I think she really does put her knowledge into practice. So this is something that you, pile number one, are being encouraged to do. Is put your knowledge into practice. Be a doer of the word and not a hearer only. And what is this knowledge into practice looking like it's looking like reinventing yourself and reinventing your world these are the last two cards wow reinventing yourself and reinventing the world and detaching yourself from things in the 3d world that you do not like So you recreate yourself and you create recreate your world in the way that you want it to be after this tower moment, after this death visitation, death figure visitation. You recreate your world exactly the way you want it to be and you detach yourself 
from anything that you see. You can see it. You can look. You can say, I do not like X that's happening in my world. But I detach myself from it. And we have this protective nest, which is what happens. You see, let's take just this figure. There's too many, there's too many things going on. The bird and the eggs and this woman and her egg. You, as this woman, you have created yourself, created or recreated, however you want to think about it, yourself. And this is your intention this is your life that you are are holding within yourself that you want to express out to the world right you you have recreated yourself and you are now in possession of exactly what you want to be and so you Hold on to it and you keep that protected from anything in your world that tells you that you are not that. So say you want to be a famous actress. And everybody is saying no. No, you are, you know, no, you're not good at acting. No, you are, you know, you're not... You don't look this particular way. No, you don't, you know, you've never trained at, at a prestigious school. Oh, you, this and that, the other thing. Every single thing they say, you could let, take a little chip out of the egg until the whole shell breaks and your dream is lost. Or you can protect this and anything that other people say or th anything that happens to you you ignore it and you continue to cherish and protect this egg of your intention and then soon it will hatch and you will be a famous actress. And it's really just, it sounds too good to be true, it sounds too simple to be true, but that is what happens. You keep your intention you do not be tempted to lower your standards don't be tempted to lower your standards you you don't have to say okay i'm going to get a job as a cpa and um i can act in community theater on the weekends and i will try to be happy <laughs> that would be lowering your standards no you continue to hold on to what you want and then what do we have here? This last one, time to go out and have fun. This means that just like this, you've survived this moment and now you get to live in this moment. That's what this means. It means you've survived this recreation of you you've survived and th and you th are thriving that you have since you have because you have recreated yourself and you've recreated your 3d so we're going from ill health or depression and financial pinch to Keep all of your dreams because they're going to come true and they are coming true. They are true now and time to go out and have fun. So this, this a leg up is kind of an understatement pile number one. Just in closing, a leg up is only a small, it's, it's like barely scratching the surface of what this moment is for you. It is a whole, it's a recreation of your life. And this tower moment is coming or it's already come for you. And this new start is your chance to totally recreate yourself and become what you've always wanted to be. 
and it is a beautiful dream that you are making into a reality as we speak and everything can be yours and already is yours, pile number one. This is your reading. This is your beautiful, meaningful, wonderful, transformative reading. Thank you so much for joining me for this reading. I know you enjoyed this reading. It was a beautiful reading. And thank you for all of the likes, shares, and comments. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss any future readings. And I know I'm going to see you very soon. Bye for now. Hey, pile number two, welcome to your reading. You chose this very charming loyal heart card, card number 35. And you chose this tiger eye heart. I'm gonna put that here. And I have two more oracle decks, so I'm going to pick one card from this deck, uh, actually this one, and I've got these two piles of tea leaves that are, whoa, well this one and this one, they're so apt to go all over the place that it's easier for, whoa, <laughs> easier for to manage them in two smaller piles you can see how energetic this is that's what the, that's the word I'm going to use to describe these from now on the tea leaves are very energetic so we have this card number 28 can you hear me very interesting very interesting and then we have tree affairs with your family there's that one astral house we have career hmm i wonder i wonder what career things we're going to have in here crown honor and respect will come to you wow looks like that's good news right next to the career <laughs> card and what's the final one not unsuccessful plans that's so funny that is not what i think of when i think of not with a k, k not with a k i don't know this one the not does not mean unsuccessful plans to me so i'm wondering what message this not will bring to us so this is this deck, if you haven't seen me use it before, it's got two scenes. It's got the front scene and it's got the back scene. It's just two um, angles of the same scene. So that's why there's there's uh, pictures on both sides. So I'm going to uh, shuffle it like this. So I'm going to try not to see what <laughs> as I pick. But the thing is, is that we're always going to see uh, what we have before the reveal so it's kind of funny it's kind of funny to um use this deck because there's no way to hide what we are getting all right i mean i guess there is a way i could put a cloth over my hands but then you wouldn't be able to see what i was doing <laughs> two let's see i'm gonna shuffle this one more time three and four no, well, actually, one, two, three, four. I want one more. Five. Oh, gosh. So funny. All right, so we've already kind of revealed this. So this is the world card. And then this is the back of it. So that's great news already. Like, just the world is everything 
The world is all of your dreams and hopes and desires. It's like it's the world that you want. And then this is the three of wands. This is the front view. And this is the back view. So he's just stepping out from this lush forest into this desert. And I'm wondering what he's going to do here. That's the thing. He has two choices. Oh, maybe I should wait, but I'm just going to say it. He has two choices. He can either try to recreate this forest in the desert, or he can try to recreate his life to align with the desert. Well, he has a third choice, or he could just step back into the forest. <laughs> but it looks like he's going forward. So we have the hermit. So this is the front of this hermit card. He has two snakes with him. And then this is the back. He has two dogs on the other side and a crab. He's got a whole bunch of friends and a face and a bird. So he's not a hermit. He has all these little buddies. I love those dogs. They're so cute. The hermit. So this is the Page of Swords. It's the back. This Page of Swords is very efforting. This Page of Swords is, has a lot of effort. Yeah, so I didn't do enough. I need one more. Let's see, this one. So this is the death card, and this is such a, it's such a beautiful death card, and this came out in pile number one, too. So we have this menacing figure with this horse that has flames coming out of its eyes, and then in the, we have the aftermath, which is beauty and light and warmth and all this wonderful stuff. So it's always so interesting for this death card. Now we have these five. So we have the devil. The devil card. These are your doubts. I think. I think it's going to be that. Well, let me pull the rest before I start analyzing. So this is the two of pentacles. Look at this ship. <laughs> Look at these waves. Look so funny. The ship is just totally plunked on top. It looks like a toy. We have the Hierophant. Very interesting to have the Hierophant and the Two of Pentacles right next to each other. The Nine of Wands. Right underneath, didn't I say this... This page of swords looks very efforty, and right underneath all the effort of this nine of wands. Very interesting. Then we have the hanged man. This is the after tarot. This is what happens a few moments after the Rider Waite Smith artwork. So, in the uh, Rider Waite Smith, this figure is just hanging there alone. And then this one, a few seconds after, he's getting a drink from this woman. She came to give him a, give him a drink. Um, maybe he's going to get untied in five seconds. Maybe this is some sort of um, physical therapy <laughs> for him. And she's the physical therapist. And she's going to untie him now. All right, maybe this has to do with this. Hmm. I wonder. Of course, because of the, there was a rope here. There's a rope here. If I didn't make that, if it wasn't clear enough. Um, so what do we have here? It's so interesting to start out with the world. I think that this card right here 
I think that this card is telling us, telling you pile number two, you might think you're alone at certain points. You might think I, pile number two, am alone. I'm lonely. No one likes me. You, you might have a feeling like that, but in reality, that's not true. Look at all of these concerned little citizens here. All of these little concerned citizens here for you. You have a crab, you have two dogs, you have a bird, you have this woman in the moon, you have the snakes. I mean, you could see the snakes before, but just the two snakes looks frightening. But then the snakes with all of these other creatures, they don't look as frightening. They're just they're just two creatures among all the other creatures. So even people that you might see as neutral to you or even enemies, they're not in reality, they are not. I know you're understanding what I'm saying because it's so clear. It's so clear. And what is the difference? What's the way to change the perception? It's just to decide. Decide, I am not looking at things correctly. This is the way I want my life to be. So therefore, that is what I am seeing. And... You could even say that this is the interpretation for us in this reading in this death card. This is what I do not want to see. Therefore, I will see this. The death card in this death card came up for the uh, pile number one as well. but that had a totally different interpretation, which is interesting. I feel like there is no death moment for you, pile number two, although there was, like, you know, figurative. There, there, there is no moment like this for you. It's your perception of it that, that made you feel like there was, but there really isn't. And it's significant that it's right above the hanged man because you could hang around in this mindset of, I don't have any friends, bad things are coming for me, I, am, I need to do a lot of effort to get anything done, I get like banged up and I get, I get cut and I get concussions and I get no one respects me and i have to wear a rope as a as a belt <laughs> but look the knot is frayed this is why sometimes these the little saying on the bottom it just isn't what is needed for the reading this is the knot of your this was the knot that you tied around yourself. This is the knot that you tied binding yourself to something you didn't want. You're anchoring yourself. Where was the ship? You are anchoring yourself to a place you didn't want to be. And the knot Pile number two, the knot that was anchoring you is now frayed and broken and you are set free. You are set free and what's opening up for you? It's pretty significant that we have the world and this three of wands right together because you're stepping from one world into the next and no, no shade on the desert. <laughs> That's kind of funny. No shade on the desert here. The desert is filled with life, but we're going to take it figuratively, not literally, because the desert is a beautiful ecosystem, whatever, but we're going to take the desert fi figuratively. You 
have stepped from this tangled forest where everything was already decided for you, the way you perceived it, everything was already decided for you, you had no say. And now you are in this place where you have a blank slate. There's nothing in here and you can create your life the way you want it to be. If you are a conscious manifester, you know what I mean. You're stepping out from one world into the next and you're able to create the new world exactly the way you want it to be. And this world card, there's just nothing, there's nothing, um, there's no special messages in this world card other than you have a whole new world. And what do we have here for a message once you have stepped into this new world? Once you have accepted that you're not, that you tied yourself that was anchoring you to a world you didn't want. Once you've accepted that it's broken, that it's done, that you are free to step into the new world, what is your message? It is... Don't listen to any doubts or fears that you may have. And you can think of your doubts and your fears as things that you have to fight against. You can think of them like that. But that is very exhausting, like flipping your thoughts, flipping your thought, flipping every thought, fl every, any thought that you have that's not what you want. You could try fighting with it and getting beat up and efforting and and trying and and grimacing and bleeding and seeing these thoughts as enemies. Or you can just let the frayed not fall apart and then with that knot falling apart all of the emotion that you associate or have associated with those negative thoughts the connection between those two are going to fall away so here's your negative thoughts and here's all of your negative associate. Well, I shouldn't say negative. Here's all your thoughts about things that you don't want. About your life that you were anchored to that you don't want. These are all your thoughts about that. And these are your emotions about those thoughts. And you have been treating them as one and the same. But that knot has frayed and fallen apart. So now here are all your emotions. I'm sorry, here are all your thoughts that you don't want, about things you don't want anymore. And here are your emotions about those thoughts. And they can drift away, they can drift farther and farther away. And so now those thoughts are devoid of any emotions attached to them. And therefore, pile number two, they come in and you see them and they try to capture your attention and you don't give them any attention and they flow away. Do you see this two of pentacles? They're separate. They're separate. They're completely separate. There's your thoughts about things you no longer want. Here are your emotions, and they're separate. So, what do we have here with all of these? We have a lot of, we have a lot of, um, 
oracle cards here. And there is a lot of positivity in this knot. Was the only one that had un unsuccessful plans, but that's, you know, that might be some thought that you have, particularly pile number two. Some of you might have this actual thought, but even that is just gone. Even that is untied, broken, frayed. Your connection to even this thought is gone. So, we have this career, career and family and love. We have, well, those are my three things. Those are my three things, my three topics that I feel like really cover pretty much everything in life. We have, well, money, I guess money, career and love. You know, those are pretty much everything that's covered, but I mean, love can include everything. It can include family and, and romantic love, of course, friendship, all of those kind, different kinds of love. And everything here, this knot is down here, but all of this, the family, the career, the honor and respect, the loyal heart, which is, you know, I think signifying romantic love, these are all together here with the world. They are up on this with the world thing. This knot is here with this, can you hear me? But no, we can't hear you. We cannot hear anymore. We, meaning you, pile number two, we cannot hear anymore these thoughts that we do not want anymore. These thoughts we don't identify with anymore. We don't hear them anymore. We don't identify with those anymore. We're separate from those. We're separate from those thoughts. We're separate. We've, we've, we've successfully disengaged from that. And therefore, you give yourself space, pile number two, for all of this success. All of the success. And I'm just going to leave you with this one image again. You are stepping from one world into the next and all of your future is just one big canvas that you can fill with anything you want, pile number two. And just don't listen, just don't listen to those thoughts of what you don't want. And right here, we have this like teaching, this teaching, this, this, this handing down of knowledge. And so I, I guess I'm reading this. It's kind of similar to the, to uh, one of the messages from pile number one. It's that you're, you're encouraged to be a doer of the word and not a hearer only, like Neville used to say. If you know about conscious manifesting and you've read and you've watched videos and you've, you know, in, in just ingested knowledge, you are being encouraged with this card, just like every other message in this reading. You are being encouraged to put all of your knowledge into practice and let go of the effort and be the person that you've wanted to be. Let the knot that you tied yourself anchoring you to what you don't want to fray and fall apart. So that's your reading, pile number two. Beautiful reading. I know you enjoy this reading. It's a beautiful uplifting, awe-inspiring reading of how successful you are. Thank you for all of your likes and your comments and your shares. And if you haven't subscribed, subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss a reading. It means so much. Every single like and share and comment and subscription means so much to me. I love to hear what you have to say. And I know I will see you very soon. 
Bye for now. Hey, pile number three, welcome to your reading. You chose this such charming, such a charming card here. You chose this card number 41, Soulmates. And do you see that this little penguin has a key and this one has a little lock for a heart? How cute. And you also have this rose quartz heart. So cute. All right, I have two more Oracle decks. I'm going to choose one card from this deck. Let us see. Oh, two came out. Oh my gosh, I don't know what happened. Three wanted to come out for this reading, so I'll just take one each from this, each of these little... Uh, tea leaf piles and you know whoa whoa I guess this one wanted to come out they are very energetic these tea leaves what do we have here you have three messages that wanted to come out with this deck queen bee number 11 queen bee Oh. Let's see. We have number 13, Morning Dew Girl. And you have number 8, Red Garden. This is such a beautiful card. And we have Money Path. A path of money is waiting for you to find it. That's awesome. And we have, can you see this? Oh. And we have Pineapple Reconciliation. <laughs> I really do not know how pineapple can be Reconcili can mean reconciliation, but I guess we'll go with it. So funny. I just don't understand how pineapple is, re is reconciliation. So funny. I mean, I know that uh, pineapple was a signal of hospitality and abundance, um, but I, so funny. These, these, these tea leaves are so funny with how they, the uh, picture sometimes doesn't, uh, jibe with the message for me at least so i just wanted to show you that this these cards this is the front and this is the back and so that's why there's um you know that's why there's artwork on both sides so i'm going to try to uh select cards without looking at them <laughs> but you're gonna be you're gonna be seeing them as i take them out i mean there's no way to hide what uh what the cards are once i take them out of the thing here let's see is that five no that's four. Oh, how about this one there's five and then we have this deck and i'm going to take Five cards from this one. One, two, three, four, five. All right, what do we have here? We have the, um, the Empress. I just love this little bird here. And then this is the back. So this is night. And then this is daylight. But this bird is still here, so it looks like the same moment. 
These cards are so interesting, this deck. All right. So we have the three of pentacles. We have these two. They're, there's the person carving and then this um, priest or something, monk or whatever. And then we have this person. What are they doing? What is this little... Oh, it's a vase. They've got this marble box or marble cube. Very interesting. What else do we have? We have the Eight of Pentacles. Lots of pentacles. I love this illustration. Oh, <laughs> that's funny. The little boy is watching and learning. And look how beautiful this is. So funny. It looks almost barren here and uh, stoic and like he's alone laboring. And then we see here, he has this beautiful view. The breeze is coming in, the light. And he's got his son or somebody, you know, somebody close to him. I'll just call it his son. Uh, standing here watching and talking and they're having a good time while he's working. Very interesting. Here we go. And then we have the Ennui card, Four of Cups. He can't see this crab. The, car the cups look empty and useless. But in reality, this crab is already moving in. Very funny. This The Four of Cups is a funny card for me. All right, so we have... What is this card? Oh my God, this is the Lover's card. I don't know why I was so confused. It doesn't look like the lover's card to me with this fire, <laughs> this burning tree. What a weird card. All right, wow. I don't know why this is full of symbology and I'm not sure it's clear to me right now, but we'll just have to wait to see what comes to us as as we read as we get further into this reading because for some reason I don't know I mean I know that the lover's card is the six but I was like what is this card it's so um the lover's card it doesn't I'm just fascinated by this card it doesn't see they, like, they have these masks on. I'm wondering if they have masks on in the back, too. Hmm. I don't know. Are they wearing... Yeah, I. you can't tell. Is he still wearing his mask? I don't... You can't tell if they're still wearing them in the in the back view. Very interesting. All right, so what do we have? The Knight of Cups. Someone's showing up for you exactly how you want them to with their heart on their sleeve. That's what this means. The death card. This is the third time. Three out of three, There's the death card has appeared in all three readings. Wow. The Eight of Cups. I love this illustration, and I'll get to that in a moment. It's really, I love these two together. The Judgment card. That's what was confusing me so much. We have this Judgment figure on, the, on this Lover's card that was the, kind of taking over everything for me. The Three of Wands. The Three of Wands also um, appeared in pile number two. 
I have to say, pile number three, that this is such an interesting reading. We have a lot of growth here, a lot of growth um, symbolized by this queen bee, this red garden, this morning two girl, lots of growth. And of course, this empress card, look at her um, surroundings. There's lots of growth. There's lots of abundance. There's lots of fecundity here. There's lots of growth. I'm wondering if this is you. She look at how happy she is and how at ease she is and how comfortable she is. It's like there's a lot of comfort here. There's a lot of comfort here. It feels like, okay, th this is what it feels like to me. It feels like there's a, two options here. She's very comfortable. He's very comfortable, although it doesn't look like it. It, it appears as if he's laboring in this dank dungeon of a room with no one else very sad, very, um, like a soulless job, kind of. But then we turn it around, it's like, wow, he's got this beautiful view. Anytime he wants to stretch his back, he can sit up, he can look out, he can step out and just look at this beautiful view and he can smell the beautiful sense of summer and he can if it starts raining he can like go look out at the little summer rain and he's got his son here they're talking and laughing as he's working the son is watching and they are in this they have this beautiful loving father-son relationship it's such a gorgeous card and yet, if you look at it one way, it looks like just this thankless work. Another way, it's beautiful and meaningful, and it's the same work. It's the same work, it's just a different perspective. So we have these two, we have this and this. And this, this lover's card, this is the epitome of like being comfortable in your own skin. <laughs> they don't really care that there's this burning tree right here. And, and they don't care that there's this giant snake in this tree. They're happy just the way they are. And they're comfortable with their, they're comfortable with their love. This is what this is telling us. This, these two are comfortable with their love. These two, there's a lot of comfort here that on first glance, it might not be comfortable. If I were standing right next to a burning tree, I would not be just standing there all happy. But they are. They can find this comfort. Well... <sighs> The thing that's confusing me about this reading right now is this death card. So I guess hmm, I'm going to save these two for later because I'm just not, I might even need to pull another card for these two because the rest is pretty clear to me. We have this four of cups and this eight of cups right here, this four of cups. There's two ways to approach a certain topic in your life. In both of these cards, there's cups that are not filled, they're spilled. Well, this has some seawater and a crab in it, but anyway, you know, they're both empty cups. They both have empty cups. This person has like just wandered off and sat down at this tree and is ignoring everything and just doesn't care, couldn't care less about the empty cups. He's just looking out at the ship and the ship's leaving and the cups are empty and everything seems meaningless and cold and grayscale and just not 
not doing much. Nothing's doing much for this guy. If you understand what I mean. There's nothing meaningful for this guy right here. This eight of cups, this, there's um, two cups that are spilled and then there's five cups that are filled still and then she has one of the cups. This guy saw the cups, spilled cups and said, okay, I'm leaving, giving up. Um, a minority of the cups were spilled but he already gave up. But she came along and she says, oh, look, all of these cups. <laughs> I can put it, I can put it even more succinctly or even more meaningfully. He had eight filled cups, some spilled. And so he left. He said, it's not worth it for me. I needed all or nothing, all or nothing. I needed it this way or the highway, so I'm taking the highway because I didn't get it the way I wanted. She came along and she said, look at all these beautiful golden cups, and some of them are still filled. That's great. I love these cups. I've been looking for solid gold cups, and I want this cup. <laughs> so she's happy with the same thing that he was disgusted enough at to leave to just give up on. So who do you want to be? And it's not saying that you have to accept what you don't want. It's saying that it's a change of perspective. Just like this card, a change of perspective can see that there, there's a little crab in it. A change of perspective can see can make you see that these empty cups still have value and purpose. So we have a lot of blossoming growth, a lot of growth, a lot of fecundity, a lot of emergence, a lot of blooming. And what do we have? What are the subjects of this? Well, it is love and money. So we already have some money. We've already covered some money stuff. So we have these two. We have this one, which is the one with the little change of perspective, meaning everything. And we have this one where this guy's do <laughs> this guy's doing all this hard labor and i don't know what i don't know maybe he's doing something else i mean it's there's two people kind of standing around and one person laboring and in the i think in the uh in the rider Waite smith there's more than one person doing the work on the actual um stonework but it's the three of pentacles is a cooperation card it's like working together for common goal that a common goal that has a lot of abundance so it looks like you have a choice actually pile number three i mean it looks like you have a choice as to whether you want to work alone or work with others just in a sheer money path financial thing you have two choices you have this money path but you have two choices on how to get there you can work with others or you can work alone either one will work out for you that's what I'm seeing here either one that you choose you choose what you like best because this is really clear and but all you have to do is set out on this path you know, the path is there for you. All you have to do is choose it. And then we have this Knight of Cups, which is, you know, the loving partner, the loving, the loving partner who is expressive and, you know, wanting to, wanting to please, being happy to please, loving to please loving to be there for everyone 
especially you, pile number three, and they're riding into your life. And with this three of wands, especially after what I saw on pile number two, pile number two had a three of wands from the, this deck. Actually, hold on a minute. I'm going to get the other. I'm going to find the other uh, three of wands. All right, so this is the three of wands from this deck. And I want to help you. Uh, I want it to illustrate this point. So this is the front of the three of wands where it looks barren and empty. And then the back is, you see that they just stepped out from this forest. So it's really illustrating the point really well. There's all of these new opportunities. It's a brand new world for you. Pile number three here, let me see. So, as I said to pile number two, this figure has two choices, three choices actually. They can remake this desert into a forest. They can decide to remake their life to be able to live in the desert comfortably or they could return to the forest. And it feels like you have so many choices right now as to what you want your life to look like, pile number three. You have all of these choices and you're gonna send this, this um, bird of prey out to gather up for you whatever you want. You're sending out your intentions to get the life you want, but you have to, it feels to me, the advice I'm getting for you is you have to really truly decide what you want so you can then intend for it. You decide what you want so you can intend for it, pile number three. So we come here to, like, we have a lot of, uh, I don't know if I, I'll just reiterate here. There's a lot of blooming and growth and warm love. And if there's, if there's a partner that you wanted to reconcile with, there's this reconciliation. Although, as I said, I don't know how it, I don't know what it has to do with a pineapple, but uh, there's a reconciliation and with a part or with a love partner or with like friends soulmates i mean you could have a soulmate as a friend you can have a soulmate as a lover there's some coming together for you as well as this wealth very favorable right very wonderful coming together being just so how should i say it being so like together being so wrapped up in in joyful things coming together so this comes to these now i'm coming to these two death and judgment these last two cards and i'm gonna actually pull i think two cards from the top of this deck so that i can see what i need some clarification on these so we have Three of Cups, and we have the Queen of Swords. The, the Three of Cups came on top of the Death card. The Queen of Swords came on top of the Judgment card. All right, this makes a lot of sense now. Um, first of all, especially since they just like came out like this, there's there's this Three of Cups. And this is more, this is more of like this warmth, this blooming, 
this celebration and this is more friendship i mean there's there's love you have this love romantic love reconciliation and you also have this um friendship thing there's friendship there's also you know still so much fecundity and blooming and and things going on here and this is on this death card so i mean that's why it was weird about the death card because i didn't see anything coming out of this death card that we see here but that means having this right on top of this means that this death card there's something leaving your life that's only bringing happiness to you something is leaving your life that is a hundred percent good for you that's what this death card means and i was like trying to find some something in here that didn't mean you know that mean that meant more of a traditional death card meaning but there's nothing there it's all very positive and then we have this judgment card this is even more meaningful we have this judgment card and this is like some a reckoning like a re 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 a reimagining of your life pile number three there is you are having this moment where you are being called upon to reimagine your life. See, this judgment figure is also here in this um, lover's card. You are being called upon to reimagine your love life, your, your, your love life. You are being called upon to reimagine your friendships, to reimagine your career and your abundance, to reimagine everything in your life. This is a real moment where you are not being called upon to go do something outside. You are being called upon to see within yourself to have this moment of sitting back and looking out at your life. And you're being called, you're being literally called upon to judge your life and see what you want out of it and decide that is what I want and to go for it in your thoughts. And that's why this Queen of Swords came up on this judgment card, which is you're going within and you're using your detached analytical self to truly decide i pile number three am not going to be buffeted around by the 3d anymore and this is what I, oh this is all i can get oh i have to run over here and do this because of that and this no you're being called upon to reimagine your life in the way that you want it and rest assured that whatever leaves your life brings joy and that you get to decide what your life holds for you whatever you want out of it whatever this beauty that's being grown here the abundance the love that is you deciding it you're deciding what you want and your decisions are making everything happen. So this is your reading, pile number three. Beautiful reading, beautiful messages, and, and just such a call, a call to action but not the action that usually is meant by a call to action. It's a call to action where you decide what you want and you manifest it in the way that is the most meaningful to you and that brings the most joy. Because the only actor on stage in your life, pile number three, is you. This is your reading 
thank you so much for joining me and thank you so much for any likes and shares and comments and if you haven't subscribed subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss any future readings because i love seeing you here and i know i'm going to see you very soon bye for now